This story is called Alumet. It's written by a man who is from uh, the Alsace region of France, right on the Rhine River across from Germany. And his name is Tommy Ungerer. Tommy Ungerer is a French artist who has written many books. He's probably most famous for being illustrator of Flat Stanley. And his own book that he wrote and illustrated, Moon Man, might be his other very famous book. Um, this is an easy way for you to get to his website that's all about him as an illustrator of books for young readers. And so we begin. Elumet, a fable with due respect to Hans Christian Andersen, the Grimm Brothers, and the Honorable Ambrose Beers, by Tommy Ungura. Summer and winter, spring and fall, Elumet dressed in rags. She had no home. She had no parents. Elumet fed on scraps from garbage bins, found shelter in empty doorways, and slept in abandoned cars. She eked out a living, wandering the city, selling matches nobody wanted. Look at that kid, someone would say. Why isn't she selling flowers, or even lighters. But matches? Who needs matches? Winter was here. Christmas had come to town. Streets festooned with garlands and cardboard angels were lively with people buying and selling presents. The air was vibrant with organ music. Costume Santas were peeling bells, warm in furs and woolens, too happy to notice poor Elumet. The crowds scurried by. It was late now, and the streets were empty. Famished, fatigued, feet frozen, Elumet stopped in front of a pastry shop. She pressed her little nose against the glass to savor the cakes on display. But not for long. Out rushed the baker, Monsieur Le Croute, in a torrent of foul insults. Off with you, varmint, smudging my window front, drooling on my sidewalk. Scram, scum, or I shall flatten you with my rolling pin. <gasps> Terrified, the poor little girl ran off, head over heels, into darkness. Elumet reached a building site. There, with her last match... She lit a fire. Up it flared, bright and hot. The heat felt good. But not for long. The silence was suddenly shattered by howls of sirens. A pack of fire trucks would soon rush into the lot. Elumet was on the run again, her thin shadow dissolving into the night. Half starved, Elumet didn't get very far. Her strength was giving out, and her scrawny little body was giving up. Out of breath, shaking, too weak even to walk, she collapsed on the pavement. Oh, what, Alumet thought, if this is the end. And she started to pray as hard as she could. Please, let me live a little bit more, long enough to have a taste of cake or just one slice of turkey or ham? Oh, how I wish somebody listen. Please listen to me. It was midnight, and belfries were chiming, when a flash and a sudden clap of thunder <laughs> jarred Elumet out of her frozen daze. A split second later, a monumental birthday cake crashed at her feet. <laughs> Dumbfounded, she was picking crumbs off the pavement when a flock of roasted turkeys came whizzing down. A horde of hams followed suit. Mohair blankets and a purple coverlet came flopping down and wrapped themselves around her shoulders. Somebody had been listening. 
Elumet's wishes were coming true. <laughs> Links of sausage dropped in a ring around her, audience-like. A tricycle landed at her feet. Then there was a lull. But not for long. A second flash of lightning and... <laughs> bang! The wishing spell burst with renewed vigor. Heavy clumps of clouds unloaded the wildest array of things imaginable. Everything, everything Alumet had ever wished for came pouring down. The ground trembled. Street lamps quivered under the impact. The baker and his wife were still awake, counting money. Startled by the thunder and the crashing outside, Monsieur Le Crute peeked through the shutter. Incroyable, he exclaimed. Unbelievable. It's pouring all sorts of stuff. They rushed out green with greed to snatch some of the precious goods and were caught in a deluge of plumbing equipment. <laughs> Their screams were muffled at once by huge blobs of strawberry jelly. The skies cleared at dawn. By then, merchandise had piled up to a height of 37 feet. Elumet came through without a scratch. Ha <laughs> ha! Some wishing that was, she exclaimed. Just then, speeding along on his bicycle, a mailman appeared. His wheels skidded in a pool of marmalade, and he slithered into the open arms of a life-sized teddy bear. Help! Don't bite me! screamed the mailman. It's only a teddy bear, explained Alumet, as she helped the victim to his feet. Sacre coeur! It must have run away from the zoo. What goes on around here, anyway? What is all this? Oh, this is mine, said Alumet. I wished for it, and it came down last night. That's all. Oh, that is not all. What are you going to do with it? Give it away. Now. "'Before things spoiled,' replied Alimet. "'In that case, I'd better get going and tell everyone about it,' said and done. "'Out of hiding they came, the maimed, the lame, the hungry and cold, "'the young, the old, the jobless, the joyless, the sick and the blind and the weak of mind.' They all emerged out of their dark, forgotten neighborhoods. Within their mansions, ill at ease, feeling cheap and selfish, the rich watched the endless procession. It is a disgrace to the good name of our city, shouted the mayor. This repulsive parade of people who forget where they belong. He called for an immediate meeting of the town elders. They assembled and took measures. A delegation headed by the mayor would investigate the scene of turmoil. Riot squads were alerted, and the army was bugled out of its barracks. In the meantime, the baker and his wife, bruised blue, came to Elimet and fell on their knees. Little one, whoever you are, forgive us. We were cruel. Let us make it up. Accept our help. Alamed smiled and said, Help is exactly what is needed. Together, they channeled the crowds into patient line and started sorting the goods in a warehouse nearby, which belonged to Monsieur Le Crut. The mayor was flabbergasted to discover a pale little girl at the source of the ferment, just a chalotting an endless supply of gifts to a well-behaved crowd. The mayor felt embarrassed. The armed forces felt useless. For the sake of his popularity, the mayor scrambled on top of the pile to make a speech. No one cared. <laughs> so, after a while, he stopped talking. By now, other volunteers had joined the crowd. Some wealthy people were moved to contribute gifts of their own. Instead of shrinking, 
the pile kept on growing. So did the number of poor who were now streaming in from faraway places. For good news travels fast. It traveled even faster when newspapers and magazines got hold of the story and spread it like butter on hot toast. Pictures were taken, articles written. Yet no satisfactory explanation was ever found. A miracle? Why not? A flying cornucopia circling the earth, disgorging itself every thousand years? <laughs> Possibly. Some claim they saw it. A stunt staged by the mayor to get votes for himself. Mm, could be. Most children thought it was Santa Claus, the real one. As for Alumet, she was not interested in explanations. All that counts, she would say, is the good that came of it. The baker's warehouse became a beehive of goodwill. It grew and grew. Contributions flowed in from all over the world, and help was sent out in every direction. Wherever famine, fire, flood, or war broke out, there were some of Alumet's willing volunteers doing their best. There never was another such storm. Anyway, Alumet, growing up at the head of her own matchless light of the world foundation, never made another wish. She was completely happy and would ask for no more. Yet, on stormy days, when most people take cover, she runs out on her terrace <laughs> and waves at the heavy clumps of clouds rolling by. And that is the end of a modern fairy tale. Elumet is a French word which means match or matchstick. Tommy Ungerer, who lived through war and famine when he was a very young person, wrote this book, Elumet. This is the end. <laughs>